What day am I on? Day eight? Day eight. Day eight. Day eight. Day's Monday? Ten. Yeah, Monday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hello everyone, I'm having a little bit of a zen moment in the plant room. Now it's not by any means all set up, but I've been bringing in trees slowly but surely, so I don't do too much of the bonsai shuffle, um, and I need more lights to order, but I've got some trays all set up, I've got some trees over here, trees over there. We're getting ready for the winter plant room situation. But today's all about day eight, part two, with uh, Don Manta. So now he runs Frontier Bonsai over in the Niagara Falls area um, on, the, on the U.S. side, right, Niagara Falls. And I got to meet him after I went to Bill Velvanis. So I started with Bill Velvanis, and then I ended up that afternoon over at Don's house. So Frontier Bonsai, if you want to get in touch with him, FrontierBonsai at gmail.com. We got together, and he showed me his collection first. So let's take a peek at what he's got to show us. All right, everybody, we're day eight on the tour, the Bonsai Extravaganza, east of the Mississippi, and I'm here with Don. We are so close to Niagara Falls, he just told me that in the wintertime you can see the steam rising from the falls. Is that accurate? Is that That's what you're correct. trying yep. to tell me? Yep. Yeah, so Don here has been doing Bonsai for quite a long time, a little off and on like most of our stories are, so we're going to figure out what's going on here in Sanborn, New York. Did I say that right? That's correct, Sanborn, New York. But we're just going to say Niagara from <laughs> Niagara here on out. Falls. How did this mess or mayhem of Bonsai, how did it all begin <laughs> with you? It's just my love of trees since I was a kid. When I was able to have a bonsai in my own collection or whatever, I started doing that. And then uh, year 2000 is when I really kind of got more serious. So my oldest tree is 24 years old, Japanese maple. A couple of years, well, during the pandemic, things got crazy. And yeah. I began to collect a lot of trees. And a so lot of I went into bonsai in that time frame. I went from four to a lot more than four. <laughs> And so, to say the so least, my wife thinks I'm crazy, but that's okay. I don't mind being crazy. So let's go right to that question. So she thinks you're crazy, but supportive. Yeah, yeah. She's supportive, which is good. Yeah. I've heard on the trip, you know, we could be into worse hobbies. Exactly. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't play golf. I'm not off. I'm here. I'm at home. Yeah. This is a Japanese maple, as you can see, just a standard mountain maple, I guess maybe they call it. And this was probably a Home Depot tree. I don't remember exactly. It was either Lowe's or Home Depot back in 2000. I believe. Really. Yep, and uh, so I began to style it and grew it for many years, and it suffered under the lack of fertilizer, <laughs> but it had really small leaves. It was sure. It was great. I mean, as far as the leaves were like, they were tiny. They were all the they smallest ones. They were like this ones. right here. Yeah. yeah. It, it was really cool. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so I thought that it had some good ramification, but it didn't really have good form, and so I took it back to the trunk. So I cut, chopped it all the way back to the trunk. Oh, boy. And... Um, and as you can see the different, it had it actually had another branch here, yeah. coming out, and so it's healing over. Nice. Yeah, so it's been sty been styling it for. So it's about 20, twenty plus years old in styling. Twenty four 24 years old, yeah, okay. twenty four in styling, and uh, this year I've cut it, I've defoliated it twice, cut all the cut the new growth of new eighteen growth. inch, twenty inches of new growth back, yeah. twice, and you can see the cuts here. Yeah. So I'll I'll when it when it loses all its leaves I'll go back and clean up all the yeah. cuts and stuff. For you just sure. can't see anything right now. All the nubs. We talk, I talked to a lot of people on this trip about the legacy of our trees and what do people do with club members that pass and we just, no one has a lot of legacy plans. So you acquired some because of that yes. la lack of a plan in, in right. a sense, right? What happened there? Her name was Arlene Warner. And uh, so she's not, she hadn't passed yet, but she's in a nursing home, couldn't take care of the trees. And so sure. these spruce were all individuals and they were pretty sad looking. Yeah. And I thought, I think I'll make a forest kind of in her honor. Yeah. So this will be the Arlene Warner Forest nice. and, uh, of spruce trees. So it's done really well. It's um, putting on actually double flushing. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so it's um, doing really well, loving its new home. I've, I've, I've had a huge appreciation on this trip for stories because when I've been to Chicago, when I've been to the you know, U.S. Bonsai Museum and the Impenging Museum. So many of these trees have a story. Yeah, here, this know. is an interesting story here. Well, cool, I, 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 I love the okay. stories. Go ahead, share more. This is a Yamadori white birch, okay? So 
this um, we're in an area where there's a lot of old World War II buildings. This was okay. this was a heavily industrialized area for World War II. Okay. And so there was a there's an old I don't know what it was some old building, yeah. but on top of this building it's a concrete building were these birch trees growing. On top of the building. On top of the building, and I'm thinking, and they look so cool, already dwarfed. How can I get one of those? Well, you know, it's probably not legal, and I probably shouldn't be telling you this. It's too late now. It was Statue of limitations. It was raining. Yeah, that's right. It was raining out one night. I said, I got my ladder in my truck, and I went over there, and I got one, two of them down. This, the other one didn't survive. So how old do you think this is? Because oh. it already has white paper on it. Yeah. Because my I, birches do not yet, but they're getting close. Yeah, I don't know. It's, um, I mean, it was white when I got it. So okay. I, and, and it pretty much I had to cut it back to the trunk, and, and it grows so fast. They do um, put on a lot of growth in they the put year. on a lot of growth. I've cut it back, I don't know, three or four times this year. And now, when you uh, say cut it back to the trunk, are those all back buds then officially, or were those yeah. branches there? No, those these are, are all back buds. They back budded. Yeah. You trunk chopped this thing. Yeah. And it, it, these are all new buds this year. Yeah. This one's right this year. This right one's there. this year. These yeah. branches. So it, oh my it gosh. back buds really, really well. And um, it's hard to keep it from getting too wide. Uh -huh. um, but they say white birch will just just die a branch will die a branch randomly. will die randomly and all that. Yeah. But a maple will do that too. So you just never know. Yeah. So, so how so long far, has it, so good. how long has it been in your care then? It's been in my care for I think four years. Okay. I think twenty twenty is when I got it. Okay. And uh, when I went and got it, when I and when you collected but, it, do you just like 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 a, like a harvest out in the wild? You just kept it for a year or so before you did anything, or did you chop it right away and put it in a bonsai pot? Um. Do you remember? I don't remember. I think I put it in a, just a pot, a nursery pot the first year. Okay. Yeah. I did cut it back a little bit, put it in a nursery pot, yeah. and then the next year I, yeah, I used to give it a year to kind of recuperate. Yeah. You know, but I got it at the right time. It's amazing what you can do to a tree if you get it at the right time of year. Yeah. People get real scared about taking, the, taking trees out and root pruning. Yeah. That Japanese maple, my oldest one this spring, yeah. at the right time, yeah. I took it out and I took most of the roots off, yeah. probably two thirds. Yeah. And then, and it grew 18 inches, <laughs> twice. Those are some pretty energetic trees, that's they for sure. Are. You've got a pretty cool uh, cascading azalea here. Yeah, this is a fun one. This one was uh, just a, a branch of my azalea in the yard by the house. Okay. It's kind of a, um, a purpley, light purple, pink color. And uh, it was, it had rooted all by itself. And I said, ooh. That's got its own roots. I'm gonna the branch that, that like a raft. A branch was just down, yeah, low to the ground, and rooted. It rooted, yep. And then you cut it off there and started growing it. At cut that it point. off and stuck it in a nursery pot. Grew it for a couple years in a nursery pot, and then I finally found a cascade. One of the club members says this is too big for it, but <laughs> we'll see. It'll grow into it. It's growing into it. It's gotten a lot better. You can get a little sense of that. Wow. Was, yeah, is it better that way? A little bit. Yep, that's a little better. I hate cutting the flowers off, I mean, <laughs> to debud it, so I let it bloom every year. <laughs> this is a fun, this is a Camperdown elm. And these were, they were found in Scotland. It's a Almus galabra, climbing down a hillside in Scotland years ago. And uh, for Scottish elm, I guess. And this is a seedling from, I have a Camperdown elm in the front. Oh, and really? so this was a seedling. And I didn't realize they, they seeded true to form. So they're not a hybrid. Okay. That's a privet, golden vickery privet. Now, do they grow pretty rapidly? Yamadori, yes. I pruned it three times. Yamadori, so where'd you get this privet? This one was in from a house that I was working on. Renovate houses, and this was in the yard of a house. Yeah. I gotta show people this uh, base of this guy. You just did this this spring, some of the, the gin shari I stuff, right? I did it yesterday. Oh, yesterday. Just all the radial roots around that thing. Oh, man, that's fantastic. And, and that is a... Eastern white, a white cedar. cedar. Yep, oh. eastern white cedar. This was my attempt at a, uh, a Ryan Neal lightning struck fir. I, I dug it up this spring and thought it was, it's been growing in my Christmas tree farm. Yeah. And I thought, well, maybe it will, I can, I, I can get it to work. And it, I dug it up and it kept, stayed green for, Stay green for a long time. Long time. <coughs> Looks like my hemlock bed was a disaster. Very mm -hmm. much like the hemlock. Yeah. And, and that was about how wide the trunk was too. So now it provides a perch for the birds that like to use my little bird bath. <laughs> this is a, um, what I think is a Hinoki cypress. I'm pretty sure it is. Even though the, the lady that owned it, which was Arlene Warner again, yeah. she, um, on her tag, it said Cedar 1982. Oh, her original tag. Three Tree Forest, oh my number gosh, 467 from, from 1982. So that, that's been a, 
bonsai for a long time. It has been. <laughs> and you uh, said you moved up uh, the back tree a little bit so we could see it yeah, better. I brought that up in there, yep. Okay, and nice. Trimmed quite a few branches off, thinned it out, and it's it's grown. It's it's probably quadrupled its um, foliage this year from what it had. Nice. It's really grown really, really well. But it, they grow really slow, you can see, but it's really starting to yeah, push on. lengthen. So. so are you a good... Um, documentarian of your trees like are you gonna be able to show this tree when you got it and then 10 years from now the, the I, I progress take photos yes okay I take a yeah. lot of photos I've gotten lazy because I take so much video I don't right. take photos as much anymore but I have oh. everything I can go back and look at now it's fantastic that's a friend of my friend of uh, this bonsai club member he gave me this blue spruce, yeah, blue spruce. and um, so I this spring I decided I'm gonna put it on this rock it the roots go through a hole in the rock yeah and go down the sides oh cool and uh, I thought, well, it may or may not, may live, may not, but it's lived. It survived. It grew and it survived. So there you Fantastic. go. Fantastic. Is that it's a Dracaena forest? That is a Dracaena forest. <laughs> oh, that's right. You have one. I have a Dracaena. Yep. From my son, from his like high school years. These are all cuttings from that one over there. Right. From Oh, there's one over there over a rock or something. That yeah, one right there? That's another one, but that main one over there. I've had oh, that oh since I was 15 years old. This beast over here. Yep. Oh my gosh. When I first looked at it, I didn't know it was Dracaena. Yep. Look I, at I, that. I cut it back every year, pretty much. <laughs> My sweet man in college named it Sid Vicious. <laughs> you may understand Sid, Sid Vicious. Vicious. Right? That's great. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and this right here, if it flowers in the spring, I bet you it's yellow and it's yeah, a Prosythia, right? right? Prosythia, yeah. So yes. what's the story with your, your the, for, I can never say it multiple times. Forsythia? For, Forsythia. Now, if you're British, you'd say Forsyth, Forsythia. <laughs> See, we, we just, we'll just call it a pretty yellow tree. That's right. Go ahead. It's, um, yeah, this was Yamadori, urban Yamadori, found in the yard of a house I was renovating. Again, yeah. And uh, it, uh, same house as the privet. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so I, 2020, dug it up and brought it home, and it was bare rooted, nothing left really? on it. Oh, yeah, there was just, and I stuck it in a, stuck it in a, uh, the bottom of a recycle bin. Not that one, another one that I cut off, <laughs> made into a shallow pot. And it so you're there. telling me the forsythia grows pretty ferociously. It grows very ferociously. Yeah, you oh my can't gosh. hardly kill it. You can hardly so. kill it, yeah. It was great to take a walk around his trees and see uh, how crazy his wife thinks he is with all the trees he has. And we had a great conversation. Went inside the house, had a little bit of watermelon for some refreshing uh, eats. We had a storm coming through though, and we had to get the rest of the interview done before the storm hit. So before I take you to the storm, you may have noticed uh, my hand. A couple people have asked and I've forgotten to update you all on my hand. So back a few weeks back, coming up like six weeks ago now, when I was augering up at Bonsai Acres, it hit a root, it boom, stopped dead in its tracks. I let go because the force was too strong. It spun around and it hit me right here. That was crazy painful. I have had it x-rayed and MRI'd and it is just a contusion of the fourth and fifth metacarpal Kind of where the um, bone is inside after that last knuckle to the wrist, right in there. A couple of pretty intense uh, bruises. I even have a little image of my hand here. If you look closely at the right of, uh, of the three main uh, bones coming down from the hand image here, the right lower part where it goes dark to whitish color, yeah, that means it's kind of bruised or contused, as they say. So it's a contusion. So I wear this so I don't do anything foolish. Just the other day, I went to go push a door open with this off and just putting pressure on there still made me say, yeah, I'm still not there yet. So six weeks later, I still got a few more weeks to wear this thing so I don't do anything foolish. But enough about me, I'm doing fine. Thanks for all the people who asked. And let's go back out to talk to Don. We sat down, talked a little bit more about bonsai. And you'll notice at the end of the interview here, well, it was getting dark because the storm was literally right on top of us. This road trip has all been about doing what you and I are doing right now. It's just walking through a garden and talking to you and meeting a bonsai person and just talking about trees and and hearing the stories and the connection that YouTube has brought to my life it's been phenomenal I just a sense of of community and connection with people who do this crazy hobby and just have this passion and so I envision bonsai acres being a place where if anybody's in Minnesota or wants to come uh, down the road like I was just in Bill Velvanis's garage and there were eight volunteers on Mondays working on trees. Yeah. So when I'm 60 and not working anymore, I mean, I can do any day of the week, hopefully, but if I go up there and have like the third Saturday of every month and say, come on up to Bonsai Acres, well, and just, yeah. just have community around trees and they yeah. have trees in the ground maybe that they're 
they put a tag on that could be their tree in a few years or just bring up a whole bunch of trees and have some workspaces, you know, workshop type space. And I could run workshops up there, but it's kind of far out of the metro. So it's like, will people drive that far? I would. I have. And I've spent enough money to take a little, you know, day trip somewhere. How far you is know. it? How many hours? It's, it, uh, the, hour the, the property is about an hour and a half. Yeah. So, yeah. and it's so straight up bad. shot, no lights. I mean, you don't see a single stoplight at the moment yeah. you're on the highway. So yeah. you go and then you go in about 20 miles into the town that, that this is located at. So it's, it's very easy to get to. And, and, uh, and then I'll have the Duluth, Duluth community, which I've started to meet some people from Duluth. Oh, okay. And Dave, Dave Severson's up there, who's been a big bonsai guy in our state for a long time. And Dave Crust is in Brainerd. I mean, so I could, I, I mean, I could have a, a kind of an interesting meeting place for a lot of uh, good mm -hmm. bonsai minds. And who knows? So mm -hmm. I'm always yeah. trying new things. And I just love <laughs> the thing. I love bonsai so much that... I'm, That's uh, cool. And then, and, you know, and, and I told my wife this too, who was very nervous at first. All else fails, you know. Got five acres of land for the kids to hang up, the grandkids in the future. If go up there and just, you know, have a few trails built in and a place to just go kick back with a bonfire and yeah, another sure. pla another place to go and get away from the city because yeah. um, in the crazy world we live in, it's yeah. nice to be a little bit more in a little more quiet area. Yeah, absolutely. The, the noise gets a little. Noisy. Yes. <laughs> for sure. That for sure. That well, thanks for letting me uh, come and invade your backyard. Oh, sure. Um, this is fabulous. You um, so you, um, you've been doing this for a long time. So that oldest tree is uh, since about 20 or so. So about 24, 25 years, yep. the, the maple. And yep. you had a stint earlier than that, right? Teenager right. type years? Yeah, well, I did. I had one when I was a teenager, but it didn't last very long. Yeah. But then when I, when I moved to North Carolina after college, yeah. I started growing some. Probably in the, I guess it would have been the early 90s, late yeah. 80s, early 90s. And I had, I had, a, I don't know, maybe five different trees. Had some yeah. really nice azaleas down there. That's very cool. Yamadori. Yeah. Thing I found in, in someone's yard somewhere or something. Can I have that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to. Just, just got to ask. It, I just cut it down, yeah. you know. It's a stump, you know. Yeah. So, and, uh, and then we moved over to Barcelona, Spain for a couple of years. Oh, boy. And so... Um, all those trees so that, died? All those trees. I gave them away, and I don't know what happened to some of them. Some of them died. <laughs> um, and so yeah. that's just what happened. So a little, so, little gap in uh, bonsai in there for yeah. a while, and then and you And then I came back, and in 2000, I kind of restarted. Yeah. Yeah, and that's when I got the maple, yeah. and then uh, Hinoki cypress yeah. that I killed a few years ago. My favorite tree. Yeah. That happens. I, I, yeah. I repotted it in the spring. It was doing fine. But then in June, at the late June, I restyled it probably not the best time of year and I styled it really severely okay and I left it in the sun it was a mistake I should have put it in the shade yeah I probably would have been okay. maybe not worked it so hard and maybe not in the sun huh yeah so I learned something there you go and it was yeah. a Yamadori it was found at the yeah. house that we bought in yeah in North Carolina I okay. just dug it out of the ground so yeah yeah <laughs> it sort of survived in the winters here protected but surviving yeah. in the winter for sure so. Well, and you said you have kind of a tree farm over here somewhere, yeah. and you've got, I don't know how many acres you are on this little plot about right eight here. Eight acres about so. eight acres, yeah. yeah. So you got, so you got some room to, to breathe. So you just, you like trees in, trees in general, but uh, yeah. what's, what's the hook of bonsai? What, what's, That's what's, a good question. What's I, making I just, it this, this level it, right now? Yeah. I guess I love to see the miniature. Yeah. The, be able to create something in a small scale yeah. that you can manage. Yeah. You know, you, if you walk around the yard, you'll see all the trees that I planted. So I love trees. Yeah and um so big trees but to have them small and mm -hmm. you know take care of them in that size and make it look like a mature tree sure it's an sure. art yeah know? i'm, I'm, oh, it's I living am an art. Art. I'm a landscape architect yeah. so i have a design yeah art background and uh so that it yeah. just plays into it and there's my love for trees and, and plants in general and uh, there's a lot of talk nature. out there about you know velvanus who i just came from very traditional bonsai guy so very Japanese trained. And I asked him why. And he said, because that's, that's what I like. And that's what I was trained as. Right. And he really likes that. But then you walk around his gardens and he'll have like, he dug up a barberry. There was this barberry Yamadori that he found somewhere and asked if he could have a type, just like you were explaining. And he's got this barberry that he air layered already since he's done this. And he collected a couple of them because the, the homeowner, again, I don't want these. Yeah. And they're like, it's like a, um, like a rough barked, maple tree there's it's, it almost looks like a pine it's so rough and yeah. it's probably 40 50 year old tree yeah. my dad's that i've been trying to make into bonsai are 25 30 years and they're still yeah. not as craggly as what he had but and he's just he'll just turn it into a you know piece of art yeah. and he does it and he showed me That's all wild. he showed me he showed me vines he showed yeah. me this kind of tree and this kind of that and and it's like so i said so you're very traditional but yeah you you keep pushing the envelope and trying all these other other styles and so where do you fall 
it looks more natural to yeah, me. Yeah, probably more natural. Yeah, yeah not as traditional. Yeah. Um, I tend to, yeah, I tend to not like quite. I think the formal look of a traditional Japanese bonsai is not my not preference. Your thing. Yeah, a little, a little too formal. A little too formal. A little too yeah I, manicured I to us. Yeah. I don't like the real naturalistic where it's just unkept or yeah. wild looking yeah. or what not. Doesn't yeah. even look like a tree. Right. To, you know, to, to look like a mature tree, however yeah. that comes about. And yeah. I'm still learning. Absolutely. You know, it's just it's a it's a never. And so is Bill. He ending, said it. To, he said it today. It's a never ending process. Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah, going to Bill and yeah. being part of that workshop with Corin Tomlinson was just really... You learn these little tricks from these guys. Yeah. They've been doing it, and they've been doing it professionally for years, and so they know yeah. some it's of the things that take back us... Back of their hand. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're like, oh, wow, you can do that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely wow. So tell me about the YouTube community. So who do you watch? Not, you, don't have to really, you don't have to name names. I don't want to leave people out, but like, but what yeah. is... What is what has YouTube been for you? How has it helped you? How has it hindered you? It's, or well, what? it's really helped. I, I, yeah. I kind of when I got the forsythia, when I dug it up and Googled forsythia bonsai, and took me to Heron's Bonsai yeah. in the UK. Okay. And uh, I just started watching all of Peter's. Yeah. All of Little his. Peter Chan And then I just kind of branched out, yeah. and Nigel popped up. With, yeah. And then you popped up, and then um, Greenwood Bonsai, and um, yeah. uh, some other UK guys. There's... Um, the guy, I can't remember his name, Yellen? Yellen? Yeah, Yellen. Yeah, he's in, he's in Holland, I think, isn't he? Or over? Yella? Is Yella? Yella? Yella. Yeah. Yella, yeah. Yeah. And then there's a guy in South Africa. Okay. That I, I watched some of his stuff. I don't know and then there's a guy in Australia. Yeah. Um, Not the bonsai bloke. Yeah. Well, that, the there's that guy, there's but there's him. another guy. Okay. I can't think of what his, his channel is. Um, but he's got a lot of yeah. good tricks. And just good information. And yeah. uh, I love the tutorials. Yeah. That you know when they talk about what they're doing as they're doing it. Yeah. To help kind of, you yeah. know, to help me to, to, it helped me to be more aggressive. Yeah. And yeah. more risk taking. Yeah. Workshop people are most of them are afraid to do anything to a tree, yeah. and then there's some that do such stuff so fast, and they yeah. don't know what they're doing yet, and right. they're like, whoa, <laughs> too much, whoa, too much. <laughs> let's let's pull the brakes on a little bit. And the time of year is critical when yeah. you when you repot something or prune. Or, yeah. And learning, kind of learning that. You need a horticultural background of some kind yeah. to do bonsai. It's kind of hard to do We're, without It seems that. to be going more that, uh, you know, when the pendulum swings in, 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 in activities in our lives, you know, people used to talk about the 80-20 or some kind of percentage. Is it is it 80% art and creativity, you know, and 20% horticulture? Or is it 80% horticulture and then 20% art and stuff? And it uh, seems to be pushing back towards 80%. It's heavier, hor you, I think you so. gotta keep the trees gotta alive. Keep alive. <laughs> Keep them healthy because you can't do some of those aggressive things you do to a tree unless it's healthy. Right. And Ryan Neal's pushing that again, like yeah. big time. You know, from even we mentioned earlier, lack of harsh chemicals, keep the trees healthy, and you won't have the pests, you won't have the, the problems you'd have. And then you can work on your tree because it's right. just totally healthy. He's we, not the guy, Ryan. Oh, and um, Bjorn. Yeah, um, they, they put out some amazing stuff. I just hate that he moved to Japan. Yeah. <laughs> but oh well. Yeah. Okay. I know that's, uh, his, that's his passion, so. Yeah. Yeah, um, and it's such it's such good information. And I, yeah. Ryan Eels Spring Fundamentals, I've watched like four times. It's a two-hour, you know, BSOP oh, live yeah. broadcast, and I've watched it four times, like yeah. through the whole wow. thing to just get all the. He talked about this, he talked about that, and that tree, and this tree, and oh my gosh! Yeah. I, did, I watched one of his on cedars, and uh, just the, he gets into the scientific stuff on why it's important to do something at this at time this or this time. way or whatever. Um, for cedars, and that was just helpful for me for yeah. cedar, because I'm trying to grow these cedars now, and just to yeah. you know how best to handle. And them. I and you ha I have to hear things multiple times, because mm -hmm. and I tell people too that the the lifelong learning is really lifelong, because I've been doing this for eight years, and I'll still go to a workshop, and someone will say something like, oh, yeah, that's a good interesting idea, or I'll hear something that a professional then will say for the thirteenth time. Now I know what he's talking yeah. about, and so yeah. you really you can't just do it in a day, you can't do it in a no. year. You can't have bonsai, and you know, right now, yamadoris yeah, can be pretty quick for a lot. For a lot. I mean, yeah. heck, that's the Western way is to go get a mountain juniper right. and have it in a show in five years. <laughs> right. and those professionals can do that. Right. Yeah. Well, this um, it's really cool at our the Buffalo Bonsai Society to see young people coming. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, do you have any teenagers? I, 
Yes. We have a couple. We have a couple teenagers. Good. And, but some in their 20s. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I love to meet with them and, and I give them a tree. Yeah. And actually, you yeah, should have two or three. Encourage them. Yeah. yeah. Talk to them. You should really them. have two or three. Yeah. You should never just have one. Yeah. Um, and so get two or three trees. Yeah. And so you can care for each one and, sure. and figure things out and learn. Mixed said, varieties, or should you stay with the same species? In your oh, mix, opinion, mix, mix variety. Mix variety. Yeah, I still lean that way. Some people still yeah. say, "Well, like, well, get 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 a good idea of a certain species, and then branch out." But I don't know. I just love my trees to death. If I have yeah. one kind, it's like yeah. I want to work maybe some this time in the summer with tropicals. I want to work in the spring with all those repots, yeah. and then I've got Portula caryophras. I can do twenty four seven if I want to, right. whatever time yeah, of the year. I've got some of those too. Yeah. yeah. Few. I don't yeah. have my tropicals. Yeah. I don't have room inside. Yeah. Got to so, have the space. Yeah, and I don't really want to delve yeah. into that <laughs> so where do so, your trees go then you show me your area with your soil and your pots but yeah. where do your trees go i have a, a glass in front porch okay okay so i have i put shelves in there in the winter and so i put the, put them on there but i have to regulate i have to keep it cold yeah because the sun will warm it up yeah, absolutely and so i keep the windows open until it gets down below 20. okay if it's going to go okay. down below 20 i'll close the windows most of the way i'll leave some a little bit yeah because they need air and everything. Not, I've never lost something to cold. Yeah. Um, or repotting, for that matter. And cold and heat for for most trees, when you when you get down to it, it seems is still the roots. And so if the yeah. roots are getting way too hot in the middle of a summer heat spell and the hot the pots warming up, or if the roots get just too cold. I mean, the top of the trees are fine. It's if those roots are just getting too cold. Some of them will sit right there on the ground. Right. You sure. Yeah, I put the, some of these um, buckthorn, these weeds. <laughs> <laughs> the weeds. Glorified weed. Nigel I, has one. Nigel a, had one. I said, oh, I can grow one. It's too. a weed's eye. It's, a, it's a, probably yeah, an invasive a, species. A bone's eye, a weed's eye. So they'll sit on the ground there yeah. with maybe a Norway maple and some um, and how, junipers. And, and how much snow do you guys get in this area? It varies. Yeah. We're out of the main snow belt, the main buffalo snow belt okay. most of the time. Yeah. I mean, we had the Christmas blizzard, what, a year and a half ago where we had two feet of snow. Oh, yeah. Like and, our and Halloween wind. blizzard. Yeah. 28 inches. Yeah. But, you know, we get a foot of snow pretty readily, but, yeah. you know, it, I don't know. It's just, yeah. it, it'll bury stuff it'll good enough. Kind of keep things healed yeah. in a little bit or, yeah. or insulated a little yeah, it bit. Usually and, does. Yeah. Usually you have enough and, snow to insulate. And you're not getting Minnesota 30 below cold. No. That, that happens so rarely in Minnesota. Right. I mean, people give us such a hard time, but we had a, our polar vortex last year lasted a week and we were down below zero for 24 to 48 hours. You know, that's, yeah. that's hard. But it was never more than like nine or twelve below, which sounds horrible for many people if yeah. they're from Texas or something. Right. But but it's like that was, and then the rest of this, we had rain again every month. We had hardly any snow, which yeah. didn't cover and insulate anything. So I think yeah, that, we had a lot of we had a lot of sun damage or yeah, weird, uh, wind damage, and yeah. But we have um, with the Great Lakes, we have Lake Erie and Lake Ontario, so they, we have our microclimate here. So we're our really zone six. Here. Yeah. Okay. And um, one ahead of us. So yeah. I'm at a five now. It used to be four yeah. AB, but now it's five. Yeah. And so there's. Um, we're pretty good. We get we don't go below five often. It's yeah. rare. Okay. We'll go, I mean, we'll go below zero not every year, but yeah. occasionally yeah. five below maybe we you know. Yeah. So you just got to protect. It's the wind. Yeah. It's the big. We oh, get sure. a lot of wind here. Oh yeah. So you got to keep your stuff out of the wind in the winter time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Winter wind can be to dry out trees and the pine, all the evergreens that are yeah. kind of photosynthesizing. I mean, like Ryan Neal says, there's always something moving around in trees. Yeah. Almost always, even if you think it's dormant, but. Uh, and that I have wind a, is horrible. I have an old chicken run back over there. I'll show you that. Yeah. That um, I kind of walled off with some plywood for the winter. Okay. And it's a little nursery in there. And I had some of my pine, the big pine there, the lodgepole pine was there, and some other trees out there. Okay. A lot of little stuff. Yeah. And uh, they did great, except for the mice got yeah. in there and gnawed off some of my jam. Mice and maples. voles. Yeah, look out. Yeah, the voles. And I, yeah, uh, they were voles, actually. And, uh, yeah. And they, uh, but I... Um, Got rid of them, so that was helped out. I've used <laughs> I've used dryer sheets. You know, people have said use like a oh. like a like a uh, dryer those dryer yeah yeah they look like fiberglass almost, but the dryer yeah. sheet, put them on all your pots, and they're supposed to keep the, that smell that detergent keeps smell them. whatever keeps the voles away. I didn't have a problem this last year. I don't know hmm. if it worked, but I had no I had no vol no vol chews at all. There oh, are some trees cool. I've wrapped just to be safe, just like yeah. some people have wrapped trees young trees in the yard from deer yeah. or whatever to. I wrapped a couple of my trees, but nothing was touched this year. Yeah. Huh. Jury's out, but yeah. we'll see. What's next? Well, I mean, what, what do you hope? <laughs> what do you hope besides the thunderstorm? It's almost at us here. What yeah. uh, What's next in bonsai for you? Where do you hope to be? What do you? Yeah, you have any well, aspirations? Well, I'm I'm developing my business, which is called Frontier Bonsai. Tell us more. And so I'm hoping to do workshops, 
Yeah. And you know, um, cell pots and yeah. soil, kind of like what you're talking about. Yeah. And, uh, and trees. Yeah. I'm going to do some, um, I've got land here, so we're going to plant some in the ground. I'll do a lot of in, in pots, a lot of maples, a lot of, um, start some pines, different Great. things. Yeah. And have a variety. So you trees. have what I have, but yours is in the back 40 and mine's an hour and a half away. That's right. Right, Darn, right behind you, the house. You've yeah. got it going on. Because <laughs> I wanted that, to be part of the whole thing. I want to have yeah. a building that's, you know, I can do workshops in, yeah. have a greenhouse in part of it. Nice. And so I can do, you know, well, have winter storage. What's the collab so. on how this all turns out? Yeah. And kind of share notes because that's, I hope to turn this into... Yeah. You know, there's a building there right now, so if I can make that into an indoor work spot, yeah, shop that's space. Yeah, they have a building there. Yeah. I and then that. I want to build just a kind of pergola type thing that we can just have a place where 12 people could stand and work on trees. Right. I mean, I just, I just have. And then if I build my, another greenhouse, if I do another passive solar, yeah. gosh, if I could make a... That's really cool, yeah. Yeah, it's been pretty, uh, pretty awesome. I'm sure you wanted it to be bigger, though, didn't you? <laughs> I'm thinking, why did you make it a foot bigger? <laughs> why did I make it a foot bigger? And even my wife said, too, she said, like, Oh yeah, you know you could have come out a little bit more. Oh, you know I just was so afraid of making it just too big and gaudy yeah. in our backyard and resale value, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, we're not going to be out of there for a good ten years probably before the kids go to college. And it all looks that, but cool though. I mean, it's pretty. It looks really pretty good. fantastic, and the concept seems to be working. Does it? It's um, actually. Is I'm. It? Oh yeah. If it's like, oh. so on this road trip, this is the coolest day yet. I don't think we quite hit ninety. Maybe I don't know. No, probably it not. Didn't, today. It didn't feel quite as hot no, with the humidity. No. But it's been 90. It was 102 in D.C. when I was there. Wow. But if it's that way in Minnesota, which it has been, was that way when I left. That that eight-inch pipe that's coming from underground, 72, 75 degrees. And it, I mean, it'll warm up if I circulate long term. Yeah. It would warm up. But uh, it's stunning. And then in the winter time, uh, it seems to hover around 41, 42 degrees. I don't oh, know if I've great. gone another foot or two deeper. If that would have increased a degree or two, but if I if I have enough solar you know the thermal mass heating up in all the all the parts of the greenhouse and take some of that warm air throughout the day in the winter time at night yeah it'll hold on to some of that heat and it's all rocks for the first two feet and rocks hold the thermal masses yeah. you know pretty well and That's not as true. much as water and some other substances but that that yeah it's it's and i wake up my you know february 15th i, I stop trying to keep it at a certain cold coldness and then it my trees, my, my larches had a first push in, in March, like a month before everybody else. Oh. So I had a full month extra growth, uh, growth and I don't know what's going to happen in the fall, but I'll go at least into November. Oh, yeah. With, with some trees. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's what I get to put them on the porch. That I get, they come out early, too early because then they, it's like, I want them out here, yeah. but I can't bring them out yet. Right. Now this year, I, I, I chanced it because it looked like it was going to be a warmer spring so i brought them out yeah and everything we did have a couple freezes yeah, we did too and so i brought in the sensitive things but my lilacs and things like that yeah. the leaves just froze yeah and they were fine really the lilacs are hardy uh, lilacs they'll, the other they'll hard. be budding in Birch. november if there's a warm stretch and it's november they're like hey is it going to be spring already That's and they're right. like wanting to wake up and then when it is a warm winter they were ready to pop right away yeah. and we have at home we have our we have our mums you know mum the mum plant yeah. oh yeah they've bloomed already yeah it's wow. august yeah. this should be september right i mean this should be end of august september so yeah. The world is changing a little bit here. It is. Well, yeah. cool. So, a couple more questions. You, you, you did talk about clubs a little bit. Yeah. So you're gonna you're gonna provide some workshops yourself, but to active in a club. Yeah, the Buffalo Bonsai Society. Pretty and, pretty good deal having a club like that. Upstate New York Bonsai Society. I yeah. joined that one. Oh yeah, it's a great great club. It's a really great group of people yeah. that love bonsai and uh, sharing their expertise. Yeah. And we're growing, which is really cool. That's cool. You know, I think it. How many active members do you guys think you have? Oh, Everybody wow. keeps asking me that. Yeah, we on a on a given Saturday when we meet, we meet once yeah. every second Saturday of the month, yeah. and um, we've got thirty people. Okay, yeah, yeah, we know. go thirty to fifty. You know, first Tuesday of the month for us, it's a Tuesday, but which is yeah. kind of hard for some, but yeah. but yeah, and we have like two hundred signed up. Do you? you yeah. Know, in I don't a, know in what club. our number is. Yeah. yeah, but active, it's you know thirty to fifty real active people. Yeah. so that's pretty cool. And We're so, gonna get rained on, everybody. We are. It's. I, think I, can, I don't know if I can hear rain coming, <laughs> but it's coming it's for coming, sure. It's coming. We could use it. So, but. My many thanks to Don for taking a couple of hours to talk bonsai with me on the tail end of day eight as I was getting ready to cross over the border and go head to my friends in Canada. That episode is coming next. And how did I get my plants over the border, you ask? Oh, I'm going to save that for the next episode. Hey, as always, take care of you, take care of your bonsai, and we'll catch you on the next one.